The sheer scale of alleged child abuse in Rotherham may be viewed as a watershed moment in our understanding of the sexual exploitation of children. But as criminal investigations continue and the town tries to heal, Channel 4 News can reveal exclusive figures that show a high number of children currently at risk across England. Data obtained by this programme shows that more than 6,000 children have been referred to councils as being at risk, and that's in the past 18 months alone. Cordelia Lynch has spoken to the brother of a man accused of grooming girls and has gone beyond Rotherham to the streets of Bradford and elsewhere to find out how many are in danger tonight. The news that 1,400 girls were abused in Rotherham sent shockwaves across the country. Disbelief was followed by condemnation. Right. Do you really think you should stay in this job? Do you really think you're the right man to continue in this role? What do you say to the victims? Eventually, there were some high-level departures. The girls in Rotherham were raped, beaten and trafficked to other cities over a 16-year period. But this programme has seen figures which show thousands of children are at risk right now in England. Me and my sister had a, an encounter before. We had to run from a car and keep it. Rotherham is not the exception. Rotherham is potentially more likely to be the norm. Figures obtained by Channel 4 News reveal more than 3,000 children were referred to councils for being at risk of sexual exploitation in just the first six months of this year. And six of the top ten councils are in the north, including here in Bradford. But the data shows high numbers of vulnerable children across the country. Figures seen by this program from 88 councils show that over 18 months, more than 6,300 children under 16 were flagged up to social services for being vulnerable to child sexual exploitation. In Hampshire, the local authority referred 196 children in the first six months of this year. In Manchester, there were 173. Northamptonshire wasn't far behind with 166. Derbyshire, 109, and Sheffield, 151 children at risk. We spent the night on the streets of Bradford and it soon felt hostile. Within moments, we witnessed a sex worker being abused. Alongside older women were young girls in the early hours of the morning coming in and out of buildings with different men. We've been driving around for about an hour and it's really quite a tense atmosphere. We've already seen a group of young guys throw a drinks bottle at a sex worker. Lots of them circling the area. Occasionally you see a very young girl and we've just come across a police officer who's looking for a missing girl who's just 14. It certainly doesn't feel like a comfortable place to be, especially not as a woman. It's just after midnight when I meet Kimberly and a group of friends. When she was 15 and her sister just 12, they were approached by white and Asian men in Keithley. Her mother told me she was forced to move them out of the town. We had to run from the car in Keithley because yeah. <laughs> we tried stopping us here. And what did they say? They were trying to get us in the car saying they're going to take us here, take us there. My sister, she didn't want to come out for... She wouldn't walk on the streets on her own and she used to cry when she was out with my mum. On another occasion, she was with friends. What did they say to you? Um, asking us um, weird questions like, um, would you do this to me, like sleep with him or stupid stuff like that. 
So it was sexual from the start? Yeah. And how did that feel? Um, scary and frustrating because made us feel downgraded. But her friend says the media coverage of grooming cases has led to Asian men feeling persecuted. And you think the stories of grooming have led to more racial tension in Bradford? You, you see people the way they look at you. They look at you like you're going to be a rapist. You, you talk to someone out on the street, they think, oh, you're doing something wrong. Have you ever been stopped by police? Yeah, I've been stopped by police. Say, for instance, you and me are walking together. They'll end up pulling me to the side and they'll, they'll get suspicious. It is impossible to know exactly what we'd seen earlier. But experts working with affected families say there are familiar patterns across the UK. I'm not surprised because one of the clear signs of a child at risk of sexual exploitation is that they're missing at night. Um, and I find it unsurprising to think that the perpetrator can walk down the street with a girl who clearly looks underage late at night and will think that they will not get challenged or not asked why are they in that situation. I would most definitely say from the experience of working with families and parents and children across the country that there is systemic child sexual exploitation in certain areas of the United Kingdom. Yes, I would say that. And it is incredibly difficult to end a culture that is becoming intergenerational. So you will have different parents, different children, but it is happening every five, ten years. It will be repeating itself. This woman, who we're calling Jenny, says her daughter Sarah was groomed online by a group of white boys and recruited by a female friend when they were just 12 years old. She believes the threat teenagers pose is being overlooked. She was contacting these people who offered free drugs to children, starting from cannabis upwards, and then told them they'd have to pay for it. The girl got paid for everybody she introduced to them. How much was she being paid? something in the region of five pounds a child. So she was effectively acting like a pimp? Yeah, yeah. She was being controlled all the time, by phone, by internet, in person. They took total control, but they had me on the other end pulling, which made it more difficult. Back in Rotherham, I've spoken to alleged victims waiting to see if their cases will make it to court. One seen here on the right claims she was just 14 when she was groomed. I was a child with a grown man. It was almost like he put a spell, a spell over me. So what of the men accused by girls? One of those named is Arshid Hussein. Known as Mad Ash, it's alleged a number of girls described him as their boyfriend. He didn't want to talk to us, but for the first time, a member of his family has spoken on camera. Have you ever asked Ash if he had sex with underage girls? I have. My father has. All, all my family has. He, he's not like that. All they've created for yourselves and the newspapers is Ash to be a monster. He is not a monster. From your perspective, okay. what happened in Rotherham? Well, it's like anything else, to be quite fair with you. People get accused day in, day out of allegations getting made. Like, like I said to you before, I, I can't sit here and call you a prostitute for a simple reason. Is That's just an allegation. I haven't actually seen you do anything and I also haven't got any proof. Do you think all 1,400 of those girls were lying? No, I didn't say that. Biggest part of the problem you have these days is these young, young girls that are dressed up, i.e. mini skirts, stuff like that, and they're going into the clubs and they're ending up going with blokes and stuff like that and they're waking up next morning and they scream, rape or groomed. Some of these girls were just 12 and that, that, yeah, that's in children's the, homes. Yeah. I mean, you'd be hard pushed that's to see it. any of them yeah, as yeah. 16. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that case, but that is really, really, really sick if girls young as 12 are saying they've been groomed. And I can't say if they have been groomed or they haven't been groomed, but if anyone's to blame on that scenario is the social workers. 
if they're going to accuse somebody, for example, a 12 year old girl's accused my brother Arshid, yeah? Prime example I've just given you. If someone's uh, accused him of that, it's not Arshid to blame. It's the social services to let her out at a time like that. And this is how he equates sex with underage girls. It's like going and eating that dog crap. They wouldn't do it. If I said to you, right, go outside and pick that dog crap up and eat it, you're, gonna, you're not going to eat it, are you? Unless you're cracked, cracked up. You know, we, we forbid that stuff. We, we wouldn't allow it. Back in Bradford, like Keithley, community groups are actively trying to tackle grooming. Victims have become mentors to support other children. But some councils only started collecting data on exploitation last year. And tonight, on streets across Britain, in dozens of towns and cities, there are thousands of vulnerable children. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now by the Labour MP for Stockport, Anne Coffey, who's chairing an inquiry into the issue of child exploitation. Anne Coffey, Rotherham not the exception but the norm is a pretty shocking statement. Do you agree with it? I do agree with it. I think child sexual exploitation has been under-identified for a very long time, part of the reason being that victims do not come forward because they feel they're going to be blamed for what happened to them. What, and, and the figures in that piece, I mean, were you surprised by that? I wasn't surprised, but I think it demonstrates that there's progress being made. It demonstrates that agencies are being much more proactive in going out and identifying children at risk of sexual exploitation and hopefully intervening before that sexual exploitation and the trauma that, that, it, that causes children occurs. So you take some comfort with the figures even though they're, they're pretty shocking and people looking at those figures will be shocked by them I assume. I think agencies including the police and children's services need to talk about child sexual exploitation more because we need a change in attitudes and that can only be achieved when people understand what child sexual exploitation is, understand what the grooming process is, understand how these children get into that situation and then feel that they can't leave it. But most of all, understand that they are children, whatever they wear. And who is failing to understand that properly at the moment, in your view? I think that, I think that we need to engage the public much more in in getting a proper understanding of child sexual exploitation because when we do that the public will be able to recognize the signs and symptoms in their own neighborhood and be able to report to children that they think are at risk to the agencies that can protect them. What hope is there though for changing the culture and changing public attitudes when you look at the brother of Mad Ash in that piece who said young girls are dressed up in mini skirts they wake up the next morning and scream rape or groom? Well, Clearly that is a, an attitude, but that's not only an attitude that he has, that is an attitude that other people have, and sadly, for a long time, was the attitude that agencies, in fact, have. That is changing, and it shows that it can be changed, and I think public opinions as well can be changed if they have the proper information about what is happening. And are those, I mean, you say victim, that, that kind of victim blaming is prevalent in agencies. I mean, do you include the police in that? I think there's some of the reviews that have been done on some of the cases do indicate that that was a real problem for victims. But I do believe that is changing. What we have got to change now are public attitudes so they don't feel the victims are to blame, so they understand what child sexual exploitation is and can work with children's services in the police in protecting children in our communities. And do you think the police have anywhere near the resources they need to deal with the scale? of this problem? I don't think the police can deal with it by themselves. That's why we need to gauge the community. When the community understands it's the, you know, the, the responsibility that the community can take in protecting those children, the police can harness the huge resources that the community have to protect children. Anne Coffey, thank you very much for joining me. And for more in-depth coverage of that exclusive story by Cordelia Lynch, you can visit our website, which is, of course, channel4.com slash news.